Pascal's triangle is an array of numbers in the shape of a triangle, and it has some very interesting properties. In this video, what I'm going to do is show you five reasons why you should like Pascal's triangle. Reason number one, it's super easy to build. So even if you've never heard of Pascal's triangle before, as soon as I tell you the rules for building it, you can build it yourself. All you have to do is start by making a border of ones. Okay, it's already starting to look like a triangle. Now, how do you build the middle part? All you have to do is if you're going to build the middle part, you look at the two entries directly above the entry you wanna write down. All you have to do is add up those two entries. Pretty simple, right? If I look here, I want to build the middle entry. I only have to add up this one and this one. Let's continue. To build up this next entry, I just have to add up this one and this two, and I get three. Similarly here, I get three from adding these two. And I can keep going, I get four, six, and four. You can keep going as long as you like. The rule is really straightforward to follow. To make sure you get the hang of it, let me build in a few more rows. So this is what Pascal's triangle looks like. Reason number two. If you look down the third diagonal of the triangle, you'll see some interesting numbers. What do I mean by the third diagonal? Well, it's symmetric, so it doesn't matter which way I look at it. I can look at the diagonals this way or like this. Let me take them this way. So the first diagonal is all of these ones. The next diagonal just gives me the natural numbers, one, two, three, and keep going. The third diagonal gives me some very cool numbers, this right here. The numbers on the third diagonal are what are called triangle numbers. Triangle numbers are the numbers that can be drawn in a pictorial form which makes a triangle. So let's think about what that would be. One is a triangle number because you can represent one as a single dot, which is by itself a very small triangle. The next triangle number is three because it's the next biggest number that you can write in dots as a triangle. The next one is six. And if you notice, this is exactly what we're getting from the third diagonal of Pascal's triangle. One, three, six, 10, 15, etc. Those are the triangular numbers. Reason number three. It tells you exactly the coefficients that you need if you're going to be expanding a term like a plus b to some power. Let me show you how. If you look at a plus b all squared, that's equal to a plus b times a plus b. And when you expand that out, you'll get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And those coefficients are 1, 2, 1. That comes exactly from row number 2 of the triangle. You may be thinking, that doesn't look like row number 2, that looks like row number 3. But what we do with Pascal's triangle is we start numbering the rows with 0. So this would be the coefficient of a plus b to the 0. Anything to the power of 0 gives you 1, so that's the coefficient 1. If you take a plus b to the power of 1, you just get a plus b. And there's a coefficient of 1 in front of the a and a coefficient of 1 in front of the b. That gives you this 1, 1. This next interesting case is the case here, which you've probably memorized in the past. If you want to take a plus b to the power of 3, the coefficients after expanding will come from this third row of the triangle. 1, 3, 3, 1. Try it for yourself. You'll see that it works. If you've heard of Pascal's triangle before, you've probably heard that it's full of binomial coefficients. The reason why it's full of those is because these are the binomial expansions and these are the coefficients that come from those expansions. If you'd like to see a video about exactly why it is that the binomial expansion of an a plus b to some power of n has the coefficients in Pascal's triangle, I've proven this in one of my videos on the other channel that I have. So if you'd like to see that, just click on this side of the triangle and take a look. Reason number four. If you're looking for powers of two, which are useful numbers to know, you can find them just by summing up the rows of Pascal's triangle. Let's give it a try. If I sum up the entries in the zeroth row, what do I get? Just one. If I sum up the entries in the next row, row one, what do I get? Well, I get one plus one, so that's two. It may not look like much right now, but keep going. 
What happens when you sum up the next row? You'll see that you get 1 plus 2 plus 1, which is 4. And again, 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1 gives you 8. If you keep going like this, you'll see that you always are getting powers of 2. So the next one you'll get will be 16, then 32, and then 64. Notice that 1 is a power of 2. 1 is simply 2 to the power of 0. Remember that that was at the 0th row. If you want to see why this is true, I have a video about it on my other channel. So just click on this side of the triangle for that video. Reason number five why Pascal's triangle is so cool is that it tells you the number of ways to select a number of objects from a collection of distinct objects. What do I mean by this? Well, let's take a look at a particular row. If you take a look at the second row here, what that's telling you is there is one way to select no objects from a collection of two objects. Let's think about that for a moment. You have two objects. How many ways are there to select none of them? One way. Don't select anything. How many ways are there to select only one of them? Well, you have two objects. You could select this one or this one. So there's two ways. That's this two. You have two objects and you want to now select two of them. There's only one way to do that. You have to take both of them. And so that's why you get this one here. And if you look at any one of these rows, those are the numbers you get. Those are called binomial coefficients or NCK. If you don't know what NCK is, I have a video about that, so just click right here to see it. Now what I've told you is that Pascal's triangle is really made up of all of these numbers NCK. So what that means is it must be true that if I take two numbers NCK for some number N minus 1, and then I add them up, I'm going to get the number in terms of n choose k. That's an interesting property. The property in general is that n minus 1 choose k minus 1 plus n minus 1 choose k is equal to n choose k. That might not seem completely obvious, but it does work. First of all, because that's how we build Pascal's triangle, but second of all, because you can prove this. If you want to see how to prove this, just click on the bottom of Pascal's triangle for the video about that. So there you have it. Those are my favorite five reasons why you should like Pascal's triangle. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe for more updates. See you next time. In this video, what I'm going to do is prove to you why these numbers, n choose k, turn up to be the coefficients in the expansion of a plus b to the power of n.